YouTube, it's Multiplier here for part six of the new studio where I tell you what I've been buying, how I've been plugging it in, etc. And also what I'll be getting next and what will be happening with this series. It's fantastic, I've been getting loads of new things. Let me tell you all about it. First of all, the microphone. Now as I do this high quality panning shot, you can see it looks fantastic. It is an Electro Voice RE20 and it is the best microphone and I will do a full review in probably a few weeks because I don't think you should do a review until you've had it a little bit of time. Now there's a bit of a story behind this. It basically explains why this video is a little bit later than you might expect. So when I first ordered this thing I will continue to do some sort of video panning thing as I, as I talk here. So as I first bought this thing it appeared to be working fine but then it would get this super strange malfunction where it would drop out for I don't know anything from 10 minutes to 20 minutes for no reason at all. It was super unpredictable, it's a classic intermittent problem and according to the internet I must be the first person to have ever had this particular problem. So I don't blame the microphone, I don't blame the company who sent it to me or anything like that. I purely think I was the unlucky 0.00 something percent. However the guys at DV247 happily sent me out a new one so happy days and it appears to be working fine. I think I just got super unlucky. That's why this video is a little bit later than normal. I wanted to wait till I had bought everything and it was all up and running properly and now it is and I'm quite enjoying this video filming I'm doing right now it's like a high quality professional sort of sort of angle thing going on and also if you're actually watching this and not say listening to it with your eyes closed you may have noticed that this microphone is in a really cool shock mount and a boom arm so first of all the shock mount is if I do some sort of point is this bit I'm poking now ding 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 that bit's made of rubber and then it's uh, basically goes through this bit and attaches to the boom arm this is a normal microphone mount up here doing 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 but the cool thing about this shock mount is or well, in fact shock mounts in general is what it does is it isolates the microphone from vibrations because the boom arm is attached to the desk so if I say smash my face into the desk that causes a vibration that goes through the arm but of course there's a shock mount so the vibration doesn't go into the microphone and I still sound brilliant even though I've been bashing away on the keyboard or smashing my head into it, whatever makes sense and the vocal quality will remain perfect at all times. Wowzers trousers. Seriously though, it's a really cool shock mount. Again, I will do a proper review in a few weeks to a month or two's time. But for the time being, first impressions are absolutely fantastic. Zoom out. Cool. And the next part of the whole shebang, I'm going to call it a shebang, is the shock mount is mounted to a boom arm. So the shock mount is the one designed for the RA20. The boom arm, so what you can do is, I'll zoom out. Ooh, ooh. Maybe I can be in it. Cool. So what this does, this boom arm, is it's the same thing you see radio stations use and it allows you to move the microphone around sometimes it squeaks but that's okay because you can you can sample that turn it into a trap song but um yes it's a boom arm so you can move it about do a spin you can place it right by your head or a bit further back wherever you want but the cool thing is it just moves about even goes upwards and yes it works fantastically again I will do a proper review once I've had a chance to live with it but first impressions are great and they are exactly as amazing as you might expect. You can move it about and leave it exactly where you want. I could leave it there or there or there, anywhere at all. But for this video, I'm just going to leave it just, just chilling right there. Next, so after the microphone, let's follow the signal flow through all the wires and into all the cool boxes that I have purchased. So, microphone, Electro Voice RE20, all bumped into the microphone, maniac. Microphone goes into a cable, all bumped into it again. Microphone goes into a cable, that cable goes through the boom arm, so it's a cable that came a part of the boom arm from K&M. Now, there is a bit of a kink in it, which I don't know if it's a problem or not. I can't hear any audio problems. I'm hoping they just supplied it with a nice sturdy cable. Who knows, but I can always swap it out if need be even though it is a headache. But yes, that is the cable that came provided. So XLR cable through the boom arm. Let's follow it through, pops out over there, goes down, 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 down. And here is where things start to get interesting. Initially, what I did is plug the microphone into my new preamp, a Fred and Stein VAS preamp. I'll do a close up in a sec. So I went microphone into the new preamp, the new preamp into the existing Scarlett 6i6. And then of course that into my computer. But the problem with that is I was having to turn up the gain 
gain on the preamp and the Scarlett 6i6 a little bit too high. So as a result, it was a little bit noisy. I mean, it by no means was a problem. I did a fair few videos like this and no one complained. In fact, it was still better audio quality than my initial setup, so it's still good. However, I'm aiming for a much higher level of quality, so I wanted to do better. Therefore, what I needed to do is bring up the level a little bit more before it got to my mic preamp. And there's a cool little box I used to do exactly that. Speedy zoom, speedy zoom, speedy zoom. It is this guy down here, a cloud lifter. And what it is, is effectively a mic preamp, but it's a mic preamp that gets its power from phantom power instead of a separate power cable. This microphone I'm using is a dynamic microphone, so it doesn't need phantom power. Therefore, what I can do is get the phantom power from my mic preamp by pressing this cool little button. Ooh, 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 ooh. Here, ooh, ooh, here it is press oh i bumped into the headphones so yeah it's got a cool little button that lights up normal phantom power uh, focus multiplier so it's got this normal phantom power button and um, what that does is supply power through phantoms to the cloud lifter for those of you who don't know phantom power is when the power comes through the xlr cable and you typically use it for microphones like condensers but yes that's the next part of the signal chain the cloud lifter after that it goes into the preamp i bought the new mic preamp called a oh, i'm in the shade the fredenstein and we're all in the shade. This is a disaster. The Fredenstein, the Fredenstein VAS mic preamp. Again, I haven't had it long enough to do a proper review necessarily, but first impressions are really cool. If you could actually see it, maybe if the sun moved or maybe I spun, a, spun the house around or something, you'd be able to see that it's got fantastic industrial design. It's just a lovely thing to have on the desk. It's a, it's a preamp. It boosts the level of the microphone signal, but it is in the shade and that is a disaster because you can't see it. Ah, oh, the shade. Oh, the shade. Oh, this, oh the sun. What are you doing? move I need a mirror just to bounce the light one, one second one second just plug this in get in the hole stupid there you go just turned on the softbox so now hopefully you can see a bit clearer still not that clear but maybe if I get out of the way a bit and uh, oh, the sun's still you can kind of see it now that's cool but um yes it's a Fredenstein VAS mic preamp that I got on recommendation from James at DV247 which is where I got a whole bunch of stuff from the microphone the boom arm cables shock mount preamp and such forth do check out those guys they are fantastic it was great at recommending me the cables and the things i need and stuff i got this little guy from them too a fame studio cm2 a lovely little microphone so yeah do check out them below yeah i did me a good deal in exchange for mentioning them and stuff so yeah do check them out dv247 and uh yeah as i said earlier so just moving this about so ooh, look at it look at it as i said earlier they were fantastic at swapping stuff out when the uh something went wrong which wasn't anybody's fault just a pure manufacturing mistake on the re20 but uh, yes dv247 are awesome and this is a cool little microphone that they sell fame studio cm2 it is cool oh so also some of you may be wondering why i have placed the cloud lifter on the floor bit of a strange thing to do multiplier what you're doing maniac place it on the desk like a normal person 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 even but um yes what i did initially there's a bit of a story behind this initially i placed it on the desk but then i had the power cables for things plugged in the wrong way and that created a ground loop do some research into ground loops that resulted in a hum i eventually figured out that i had caused a ground loop i fixed that by plugging stuff into the correct power bits and and then after that, it was still making a bit of a humming sound. And I realized that the cloud lifter, this mic activator, mic preamp, whatever you want to call it, was a little bit too close to initially another power cable. And then also the giant magnet all bumped into the, the shock mount here with my watch funny multiplier. But yes, initially I had the cloud lifter too close to the giant magnets in the monitors here. So uh, I've kind of just placed it on the floor as a temporary solution or a permanent one. Who knows? Who knows? I might just leave on the floor like some sort of wild vagabond or something but uh, yeah that for the time being at least it's living on the floor um i do need to buy in fact i have actually ordered a new xlr cable to go from where my finger's pointing now deep around the back into the preamp deep over there um just because i'm using an old one which is super temperamental if i move anything or step on it by accident not that i really step on it in the middle of recording but yes if i move it or bump into something it makes a weird noise because it's kind of broken so ordered a new one of those. Awesome, so that is all the new things on this side of the room. I have also done new things on the other side. Let's do a spin, 180 degrees, and look at that, get out the way chair. Um, yes, I have organized it. It now looks a lot less chaotic 
and you can see it just looks a million times nicer. So let me run you through what I've done. First of all, I can't remember if I showed you in the last video or not, but I have placed the soft box permanently in that corner. And the cool thing about that is I can just turn it on whenever, even if it's dark outside, and it lights up the entire room. Now, yes, my face isn't lit up directly. It's just bounced off the wall, so it looks a little bit strange, but it kind of looks cool, it gives it character. Um, so yes, it works fantastic just to fill out the ambient light in the room. It's super, super bright, and then of course, because I have white walls, it bounces off and all the colors stay nice. So uh, yeah, daylight bulbs, white walls, therefore, when that is on, it just fills the room with daylight and brings up the level of light and everything looks amazing, so that is fantastic. That lives permanently over there. I have moved the whiteboard completely out because it's, uh, I haven't decided what I want to do with it, but it's basically not living over there because I hate it so much. It's a stupid whiteboard and don't even get me started again. See previous video if you're wondering why I'm getting angry about this. But yes, check this out. I finally have some storage for all my toys and they look lovely there. And especially on webcam, it just looks nice in the background and also it's just nice to have it all arranged, organized. Oh, 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 let me give you, let me give you another angle. Let me give you another angle. Ah, don't step on that multiplier. Oh, okay, right, this is far enough round. Cool. So, over when well, I can show you what it looks like from the webcam roughly. Bam. Right, cool. Uh, this looks nothing like the webcam. It's probably because of different camera angles and wide angle lens differences and stuff like that. But, uh, whatever. It looks cool from the distance. You will see in the maybe even the previous video on the channel, all the new ones, whatevs, trevs. But uh, yes, that is how I'm storing all my stuff. And the cool thing about that is I can just pull things out, whether it's my DJ software, a MIDI fighter, or the Control S25, Beep, this little guy here. I can pull it out, have a jam session, or record it, make a video about it. That's what I've been doing recently with the Control S25. That's why it's been out in recent videos, in case you're wondering. But uh, yeah, the nice thing about just having it all in storage like that is I can just pull something out, whack it on the desk. I can, yeah, do whatever I want. I can just pull stuff out, put it away, pull it in, out, in, out, in, out, and I pull it out, pull it in, pull it out. You know how it works. That's what she said. But, uh, oh, let's go back round. These aren't permanent. I've just placed them there because I haven't figured out what to do with it. I've written down my preamp settings and just, just stuck some headphones. This is loosely speaking how the freeform fun zone will exist. I'll have all my toys down below and then I can be like oh cool let's have some freeform fun what about midi fighter let's grab this out I can put it there plug it all in I grab my laptop I can be like doop doop place it on the desk and then a power cable down there I could just pull it out don't even need to replug anything and then I can just like jam out jam out jam out oh do I want to use the monitor maybe to do a screen recording oh I have the monitor cable already oh how convenient is that I can be like Doop. Oh, I went too, 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 too aggressive with that. But I can be like, doop, pull it out, plug it in, wowzers, trousers, look at that, easy peasy. And I can even use additional USB ports if I need to. Or, as they say, these are the cables for the Control S25. The reason why they live somewhat permanently there is I use the S25 here quite a bit for doing videos for guys like Plugin Boutique and so on. I can just pull it out, plonk it on the desk, got my GoPro, we can just film it. Uh, and that's rad. I'm going to put that back. It's just. Place that back in here. Make sure it's all straight, otherwise I'll have a panic attack. Oh, film property multiplier. And I think that will be that will be good. Cool. And yes, that is the freeform fun zone. Now this is something that's bothering me. It will bother almost nobody, but I do want to show you. Just sitting down in my chair, all casual like, and look at that. The desk is Boeing. So so look at how oh, stupid it looks. It looks more Boeing in real life. Maybe if I get the angle just right. Can you see how it's bowing downwards? It's like it's like an elephant sat right in the middle. It's not straight, it's bow, bowed, bowed even, bowed down. Uh, that's really annoying. Uh, it doesn't actually affect any of the content I produce, but it affects my brain in the sense that it's not straight and that is stupid. Warning, 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 do not buy IKEA if the thing you're using the IKEA thing for is going to get a lot of use, like a desk. If you're just buying, say, a bit of storage or a stand or something relatively low impact, like say this guy here, then it's perfectly cool. If it, if it looks all right, it may not have the highest build quality, but that's okay because it's just got to hold the weight of a few keyboards and stuff. However, if you're buying something like a desk or I suppose you could extend this to uh, like kitchen tables or furniture and stuff like that, you've got to make sure you don't get the cheap one like I did because the cheap one isn't actually proper wood. It is cardboard with some sort of wood laminate. And as a result, it bows after only about two years or so of very light use. This was never my main desk. It was a backup desk at my old place. And even so, being a backup desk, it's bowed after like two years, which is nuts. Whereas the other one, 
I bought, well, my parents bought years and years and years ago when I was about 10, and it is still straight. You can stand on it, you can you go crazy, and that's because that is solid plywood. Now, you can get better IKEA desks. I just got the cheapest one years and years ago, or say two years ago, um, and that was my mistake. Make sure if you get a desk, you don't get the, there's probably a special name for it, um, make sure you don't get the type that is cardboard covered in a wood laminate, make sure you get a, a hardwood, like a solid bit of something. It could be oak or any wood, any, any wood's fine. I'm, I'm not a wood expert, um, but yes, make sure you do not, warning, 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 do not get the super cheap IKEA desk um, that is cardboard with a wood laminate. Otherwise it bows like that. You can kind of see it. Uh, you can see it more in real life, but uh, I suppose the only people that are gonna be seeing it a lot are the honeys who are sitting where I'm sitting right now. Quite a cool angle though, it's quite nice sitting on these chairs. These chairs are growing on me, I quite like it down here, it's, uh, it's chill. Uh, especially now the whole studio is a bit more developed, there's still a lot to do, but it's a bit more developed. It's quite chill, it's uh, it's nice, I can uh, just kind of do be do be do I can uh, sit over here, I can just look, look at the world. Let's see another one. This is what it's like over here. Um, just in case you're wondering, you can be like, oh, cool, I need to do a bit of dusting, and you can be like, and so all that, all that kind of stuff. That's fantastic. Um, but yes, this is what it's like in the chairs. I'm definitely keeping the chairs. These little guys I'm sat on now, I've decided because not only do they absorb sound, I think they balance out the room, and you can also sit down on it if you just want a little sit down, which I sometimes do. And what else? Oh, oh, yes, there's one more thing I bought for the studio that I want to show you. Check it out, right, cool. Have you spotted it yet? Have you spotted it yet? Have you spotted it yet? Somewhere up there, somewhere up there. Have you spotted it yet? Somewhere up there. Have you spotted it yet? Somewhere up there. It's a lampshade. This guy up here is new. I have bought one for the studio because I was buying lampshades for the entire house, um, which turned out to cost a lot of money because it turns out that these aren't cheap and uh, most houses have more than one light bulb. So that was kind of annoying having to spend a lot of money on one of these, but I, I, I love it. Oh, it's so good. It's got, it's got vibe there. I would say that's a very vibalicious lampshade, especially if you turn it on, but I never do because I use the, uh, the the glowy colored lights, the hue goes. Um, but yes, in terms of just looking cool in the room, I would say that is a banging lampshade. That is the lampshade of a king right there. It is amazing. And yeah, it lives, it's for the studio now. And um, in fact, I'm not even sure I've ever turned that light on. Does it even work? Oh, it does work, but um, not for now. Uh, yes, I bought the lampshade. Studio Essentials right there. And yeah, let me finish off by telling you what will be happening in the future. Let's sit down for this, let's sit down for this. So. This is the final, the lampshade is still moving. This is the final part of the new studio series, part six. This doesn't mean the studio is complete. There's loads of things I still want to buy. And I'll tell you a few of my ideas at the end of this video. But yes, the reason why I'm finishing this new studio series where I am is so, somewhat arbitrary, but basically I, I suppose it's more of a, a naming system. What I don't want to do is have like new studio exclamation mark exclamation mark part a gazillion. Instead what I'm going to do is name the videos more vlogging style. So I will continue to do vlogs, but I will do it in the naming convention that most other YouTube vloggers do. So it will just be like new cable or name of the new toy or I have bought this or something like that. You know, where it's just like a, a sentence of what's happening and then I'll, I'll vlog it, tell you what's been going on. And then what I'll do is simply put all these studio related vlogs into a playlist. So if you want to look at the evolution of the studio, you can still see it, but the names won't necessarily be in order, if that makes sense. And it does. So yes, this will be the last of the new studio series, but the studio will continue to do evolutions. It will continue to evolve and I will tell you all about it in the vlogging style because I quite like vlogging. I've been getting into it big style on the YouTube. Uh, so yeah, I will be doing that on this channel as well. Telling stories, taking you along for the ride, doing a point, maybe falling over, bumping into stuff, and that'll be great. So what are my ideas for the future? What do I want to do to this place? What things do I have in the pipeline? Let me tell you all about it. First of all, I will be purchasing more acoustic foam. I haven't decided exactly what or how much or when, but I will be buying more just to deaden that room a little bit more. So there's dusty on top of the speakers, but yes, I'll be getting more acoustic foam. So I deaden that room now a little bit more and that will increase the quality of my voiceover things. I do tutorials, product walkthroughs, product videos, and so on. Bloop. 
But the next major area of concern is this one here. Right now, it is cable apocalypse, and I have these little cable blips, but then the cables get tangled and confused, and then I, and then I, and then I start crying. But uh, yes, I need some sort of better system for storing my laptop, all my hard drives, my cables, my USB hub. I have a few hard drives down there that I'd much rather keep more permanently over here for backups and stuff. But I just really haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it. I mean, I need to buy a few more hard drives as well. Um, There's a whole separate issue, but uh, yes, this will be the next major zone that needs sorting out. And to be honest, I haven't got any idea how I'm gonna do it. I was thinking maybe a bookshelf or something for hard drives, or maybe, I mean, ideally I'd like to keep it all below desk level, but who knows, I haven't had a good chance to think about it yet. At least the area works. It's not ideal with all the cable chaos, but it does work as a zone. Therefore, I can do work, do productive things. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is an area. I do want to sort out. Also, I do want to replace my Ableton Push at some stage. Well, yes, the Ableton Push 2 has a much better screen and stuff like that. The biggest reason why I'm not really that stoked on this right now is, I don't know if you've noticed in any of my videos, I wonder if I can show you now, or maybe I haven't got Ableton up, so I won't, I won't show you. But yes, what normally happens is the these pads the colours aren't quite right. I know you can get calibration software to tweak the colours because I got one of the really early Ableton pushes where the colours went a bit nuts. But uh, yes, even so, even if I got the colours fixed, some of the pads of, uh, aren't quite working properly. So I do want to replace that at some stage. I don't know exactly when because it's not the biggest deal in the world. But yeah, certainly on the maybe not short term, but medium term to do list is an Ableton Push 2 because it is my main production thing. And for the sake of £250 or £200, whatever it is, since I get half off, it is my job after all to do these things. So yes, I will be getting one at some stage. Also, again, probably not in the short term, but maybe in the medium term, I want to get a better keyboard. I'm actually using this. Now I have it plugged in with a super long USB extension cable, in fact, two USB extension cables, all plugged into the USB hub. Now I have it all plugged in and turned on and stuff. I'm actually using it more than I'd expect. Well, yes, it doesn't do the scale stuff that I'd like, that I can use on, say, my Ableton Push. You definitely end up playing different rhythms and you write different ideas out using keys compared to pads on the push so creatively um, I'm finding having some real keys rather rather useful so I was thinking I'll probably get a proper keyboard like a nice one maybe even if I'm feeling extravagant the proper full-size control one and then it'll be nicer and if I'm using say a contact library that has a lot of key switches I'll be able to see the colors uh, for all the different key zones is it key zones I think so key zones or whatever. Um, yeah, you know how on contact libraries you have different colours above different selections of keys? If you have the Control S series keyboard you can see all that and that might be quite useful. I mean yes I absolutely hate native instrument software but saying all that I might still get one anyway but um, yes I'll probably have to explain my thoughts in more detail about native instruments because it's a, it's a very much a love-hate, more so hate but it's a very much a love-hate relationship uh, me and everyone else has had with this company to be honest but uh, yes I'll do a video more on that at a later date and the final thing I've been looking to get again not necessarily in the short term but maybe probably the medium term though is some form of analog gear now that could be a modular synth setup or some analog keyboards analog outboard gear who knows I've only literally just started researching it and it's an absolute minefield and I don't want to drop a few thousand pounds on something unless I definitely think it's the right thing to do but it is definitely something that will happen I don't think it will make my tracks any better but I think it'll be fun and that's part of music right it's having fun and for me personally I can't wait to get more hands-on with my music I mean yes you can do amazing things with software software is more powerful it's more versatile a million reasons why software is probably better but I really want to just get hands-on with music Music in a more physical tactile way and that's why I've been looking at getting analog gear so that'll be a fun process as I start to do more research maybe even I'll do a whole series on me deciding what gear I'm gonna get and then figuring it all out buying it bit by bit if you do know a lot about analog gear and you like talking tech feel free to find me an email and I can pick your brain and we will talk about analog stuff that'll be fun so yeah do find me an email because I'm really new to analog I know virtually nothing about it I spend all my days working with plugins and DAWs but I'm finding the concept of getting some analog gear now I have some more space 
quite interesting. And that will be it for this vlog and also kind of the series, the new studio. Now it's all up and running. I can start to use it a lot more and evolve it. But yes, do it in more of a video by video basis, stick it all in a playlist, but not lay it out with part numbers and stuff like that. I have been Multiplier and this has been a story time with Multiplier with many, many parts, six parts, as I have put this place together. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I will catch you on the flippity flip.